Ναι, εσύ. بالأحضان الأبوية سؤال كده في واحد بعت لي على الواتساب يعني بيقول لي احنا احترنا ساعات تدينا امل وساعات يعني ما معناه توجع قلبنا بصوا احبائي هو سكه السماء سهله وصعبه سهله من كتر رحمه ربنا لكن صعبه لانك لازم تمشي ضد الطيار وضد ارادتك والتوبة لازم لها جهات ففكرة التوبة understand that repentance is the solution and the way repentance gives mercy and gives the path to heaven repentance means to love people and to forgive people but repentance needs struggle needs labor needs prayers and fasting 
needs escape and fleeing from sin. And whenever you fall, you rise again. And that's how you go into the path to heaven. God gave us a lot of hope in his words, but he also gave us warnings. Then I am doing the same thing. I am giving hope and I encourage you and I tell you heaven is beautiful and his mercy is great. But then I have to tell you also fear God. Fear that heaven is not lost from your hands and you need to labor. So both methods are important. And if you read the, the teachings of our Lord, he always will combine the hope and the warning. And that's the balance in orthodoxy. We encourage people that there is grace, and the grace is what takes us to heaven. Whatever we do, He will always lift us to heaven. But we have to hold fast on Him. And if we don't, we'll be lost. So we have to be warned. I think even parenting is like that. We encourage our kids and we discipline them and warn them. We give them confidence and we give them love, but then we tell them, watch out. So, one cannot be done without the other. Another question regarding the purity of heart. There is a whole book from His Holiness Pope Shinoda about the purity of heart. But the simplest explanation is to get rid of sin. Not to get upset from someone, not to be holding in the world. He is just living in a cloud of peace and love. And blessed are those who are pure in heart because they see God. And what, that's what you notice in the fathers when you sit with someone who is like a child. So pure, so simple in his heart. And that's why you learn from them. When the children return back from Khatadba, are they being followed? Yes, they are being followed in their own villages. They start in, in, the, in our retreats, but then they are being followed in their homes and their churches. The idea of sending some of our youth to serve, would that really change their lives? 100%. You may have heard some of the youth who went and returned back and speaking about their experience. When they feel the love of the kids and the, their content in spite of how little they have, there are so many lessons they get even without sermons. It's a different world that they live with and they live in. Question. I will not drink from this vine until I drink it new. He meant that from now on there is no more old Passover. There is going to be Eucharist. The last Passover in the Jewish manner was in the eve of his crucifixion. And that's it, there is no more lamb of Passover. But now there is a Eucharist. I will not drink it except new, meaning the meaning of New Testament and New Covenant will be in heaven and no more old Passover. Some people also explain it about heaven. Drink it new in the kingdom of God does not mean literal drinking, but rather the true meeting with God is like a spiritual taste.
شايف في ناس بتنظر كده شيء بيفرحني عشان يبقى بعد كده نعمل الوعظة وإذا كان في صلاة وخلاص المكتبة بره برا لما بيت عليا نجلي المكاتب بتاعت الكنايس لو خدوا 50 or more بيدون significant discount فأرجو إن أنتوا تاخدوا الحاجات اللي بره لأنه فعلا كلها رايحة الخدمة وبصراحة مش عايزين نلف بيها في حتة تانية المجلات بتاعت مران اخر من سيدنا امبا ديفيد كل المجلات ورا وهي مش واحدة بس يعني هو يظهر واحدة كل فترة فبليز خدوا عينة من كل حاجة ولو عايزين تاخدوا لكنيسكم برضه خدوهم لانه هو سيدنا عايزنا كلنا نوزع في اماكننا يعني في فلاش درايفز اوت سايد فيها كل الاعزاب بتاعت ابونا داوود خلال السنتين اللي فاتوا واعتقد انها a major library in the little flash drive. Speaking of flash drives, برضو الفلاش درايف بتاع المؤتمر ده كل الفيديوهات والباور بوينتس ما عدا بتاعت امبارح موجوده عند بس. لو قصدي فوديو موجوده مع الاستاذ مشير والبشمهندس ياسر اللي عايز. Next year هيبقى 20 years of this conference. نعم ربنا وسلامه. زي ما ابونا قال اول مكان ابتدى فيه كل المؤتمرات وربنا فتح على بلاد ثانيه فبنعمه ربنا يكون مؤتمر طبعا لازم يكون قوي بس هيكون فيه حاجات مميزه كتير واللي عايز يبعت لي اي افكار انا جالي افكار جميله واحب استفيد من كل افكاركم ولو عندكم اقتراحات لاماكن ثانيه انا عارف المكان هنا فيه عيوب وفيه مميزات بليز ابعتوا لي لو عندكم اماكن او عايزين تساعدوا لي انتوا تبصوا في اماكن ثانيه تكون في منطقه نيويورك ونيوجيرسي يبقى معقول برضه عشان تبقى سنترال لكل الاماكن الثانيه. عايز اقول حاجه ويعني حصل جميله جدا احنا امبارح الدكتوره لم اتكلمت على الدايازيس. الحكايه دي فرحت ناس كتير وريبيكا واحده من بناتي في كوينز نيويورك ريبيكا ممكن تقفي؟ اه فريبيكا ريبيكا ومامتها ابتدوا يفكروا ان هم يلموا فلوس كتير لغايه دلوقتي انا فهمت انه في اثنين ماشيين سكول مش ماشيين واحد وبعد كده ثانيه واحده وبعد كده واحد جه وبسبب شخصي عنده اتبرع بماشين كامله بقت لوحده الحاجة اللي عجبتني الحقيقة إن أنا سمعت إن الولاد ابتدوا يقولوا إحنا ما كناش نعرف إن يعني بقوا فيري براود ودي لوحدها أي ثينك درس جميل إنه الولاد نفسهم كمان أه نبتدي نتكلم على الميموريزيشن أنا هقول الأسماء وهنطلع مجموعة مجموعة والمجموعة اللي هتطلع هتاخد يعني الكتاب من الهدايه من ابونا ويقف ورا ابونا وبعد كده هينزلوا هيطلع مجموعه غيرهم على حسب العدد. اول مجموعه هتبقى الانجلش سبيكينج احنا فرحانين قوي بولادنا تيموثي يوسف تو باسنجز من هنادي كلهم جانا يوسف تو باسنجز انت جريد برضه جوناثان موربوس 6 جريد 1 باسنج بيير بولس 1 باسنج 3 جريد فيلوبا تير جيكوب 1 باسنج 6 جريد ماري جابرييل 1 باسنج 7 جريد بس تعالوا حوالي تعالوا هنا
Thank you, Lev. Thank you very much. Big, big hands. بعد كده هقول المجموعة اللي حفظت 1 باسج وبعد كده المجموعة حفظت 2 وبعد كده حفظت 3 وبعد لما يطلعوا كلهم هناخد صورة مع 1 باسج و 2 و 3 اوكي عشان بس مش كل الناس تقعد طول الوقت. ال 1 باسج القطعة واحدة هالا مرقص نجوى نصحي وائل يعقوب رشا سعد سامح جندي رانيا جندي مريم وديع ميري جرجس ميراد منير انجي تاوفيلس رفيق واربعو واربعو تفضلوا كلكم تطلعوا هتاخدوا هدايا وتقفوا ورا بورنك فور وان بيكتشر احنا هنحط كل الصور يا جماعه على وان فلاك وان شابر بعد كده اتفضلوا اقف مع هنا عشان تاخدوا وان جروب بيكتشر اوكي ثانك يو اللي حفظوا قطعتين هبتدي اقول اساميهم ويطلعوا كلهم مع بعض ايفات ابراهيم سوزان خليل شيري يوسف سامح اسعد ميرفت جرجس بشوي مخليل بسمة شنودة جاكلين اسكندر جاكلين جرجس تيسير جرجس سالي بشاي اوديت رياض سوزي مالتي مجدة داوود عماد ملاك فيبي مسيحة تريزا استفانوس وميراد حنين نشكر تريزا وجاكي ان هم سمعوا جيب بيج هاند فور ريباكا
One of the inaudible prayers, inaudible prayers of the priest, he says, Restore us to your fear and your passion, command us to enjoy your benevolence. The priest say this, he prays it before the final absolution. The final one, you all hear it because it is said audibly. But he always pray this in Eucharist and also in the sacrament of confession. Let's review the prayer of Abuna during the sacraments. You, O Lord, who bowed the heaven, you descended and became man for the salvation of the mankind. You are he who sits upon the cherubim and the seraphim and beholds those who are lowly. You also now, O Master, are he to whom we lift up the eyes of your heart, the Lord who gives, forgives our iniquities and saves our souls from corruption. We worship your ineffable compassion and we ask you to give you give us your peace for you have given us all things acquire us to yourself O God our Savior for we now none other but you your holy name we utter turn us O God unto the fear of you and desire of you Be pleased that we may abide in the enjoyment of your good things, and those who have bowed their heads beneath your hand, exalting in their ways of life, and adorn them with virtues. And we may all be worthy of your kingdom in heavens through the good will of God, your good Father with whom you are blessed. Amen. I would like to focus on the word restore us to your fear. Oh. We rarely ask us ask God for restoring us to your fear. Because more than likely, there was a time in your life that your fear of God was much more higher than this. You cared about Him and you didn't want Him to be upset from you. But then you became busy and you became less careful and you allowed things to happen that it didn't happen before and your conscience became less painful because the fear of God became less. Restore us to your fear. And of course, as you all know, the fear of God is two types. There is a holy fear and bad fear. The devil usually takes something that's very holy and makes it into a bad one. The holy fear is what keeps you in a straight path. When you are afraid that you are not scared, you are not praying, you pray. When you pray that you don't want problems, however, when you are afraid of problems and you go around it and cause issues, that's not a good fear. The good fear, it makes you what does the right thing. I met a young boy one time. Someone met me and he said, 
I used to have nightmares and because I'm scared of nightmares I start praying and whenever I do not pray I get the nightmare so I start praying more the holy fear pushes you to do the right thing, makes you to do the right thing. The holy fear makes you remember not to make anyone upset from you or care about their salvation. I may have lost the holy fear. I may have lost it and now I'm becoming careless and hard-hearted. When David sinned, he made very serious and aggressive sins for a man who was saying all the Psalms. How can you kill a man and he's supposed to be a friend? He lost the fear, he lost the good fear. So restore us to your fear. I want to be scared of the wrong thing so I don't ever do it. If I'm afraid to do the wrong thing, I'm afraid to say the bad word. I'm afraid to offend someone. I am avoiding these things. There is also the fear of worship. Somebody said, if our eyes are opened and we see the glory of God and the angels, we would have all bowed down the whole liturgy. But because we don't see, we are not afraid. The fear while you are praying at home, the being distracted at home, you don't have fear that you are standing before him. You should focus on what you said. You should not be distracted. That if you even speak with someone and you lost focus, he will not like it. What about standing before God? The fear to sin. What if you sinned and I didn't have time to repent? John the Short. He was very humble and one time they were walking and he was crying bitterly because he saw someone who is sinning. They told him, you have a pure heart because you are crying for a man who is sinning. No, this is not what I'm doing, he said. I am praying because I'm afraid that he will sin and repent, but I wonder if I sin, I may not have time to pray, to repent. So the fear of sin, that I don't continue, and all of a sudden I fall short of his mercy. I'm afraid I go into a conversation and distracts me. I'm afraid to say a bad word that offend someone, restore us into your fear. Instill in me your fear. There are people who are not interested in the fear, but the fear is what helps us through our salvation. Joshua, son of Sirach, says, the fear of God is the beginning of loving God. The one who fears God is afraid to make him be upset. Abraham, his friend, the friend of God, he said, I started to speak to God and I am dust. And then the fear of judgment. You can be condemned, you may be judged. Are you afraid and you cannot solve that anymore? Some of our forefathers, the saints, because of their purity at the last breath of their lives, they are still asking for mercy. 
because they are afraid of judgment. They are not guaranteeing only through His grace we are entering. It's fearful to fall in the hands of God. When you find your heart is hard, heart is hardened, watch out when you see that you don't have fear, when you see you becoming careless, when you see you becoming lazy, all are signs of loss of fear. Restore us to your fear. There is also the fear of offending people, of stumbling others. A mother came to me saying, I have offended my daughter. I was only interested in her studies and her sports. When she became distant, she doesn't listen to me anymore. I'm the one who stumbled her. I hurt my daughter. I repented, but how can I bring her back? The fear of stumbling, the fear of offending. The fear of being lukewarm. A servant taught me a lesson. He said, for a week, I feel like I'm not praying with any feeling. I'm afraid to die like this. Please pray for me. I am not used to that. I am trying to spend time with the Igbeya and Bible, but I'm scared. I'm not uh, as if he got, as if he caught an infection. Some of us may pray for a year without feeling anything. Fear of the Bible. In the tradition of our church, we say, stand up in the fear of God, listening to the gospel. Because the words of the Bible are the Bible, are the words of God. How can we not be afraid to listen? We must listen and act upon the words. So you are afraid of the words because they will be judging you. In the end of Isaiah, it says, I love the person who is afraid of my words. Some of the words must shake us. The people and the opinions of the people will not affect us, but only our stand before God. The fear of making the wrong decisions and while you are making a decision, did you pray? Any big decision, immigration, wedding, a change of jobs, a change of services, are you praying? It may take you differently. It may take you completely in a different pathway. Keep praying, asking Him to bless. Stop it if it's not your will. If you are afraid, of God, you will do the wrong decision. If you are afraid of God, you will make the right decision and you avoid those wrong ones. So we all need restore us to your fear. There was a time in our lives when we were better than this. Our conscience was more alert. You were affected easier and you are more sensitive and you are afraid than now. The second area we pray, restore us to your passion, as if we think it's all related to fear. Of course not. He is a father. He is a beautiful father. But our feelings are hard and are not reacting to his love. So we ask by restoring to your passion, move our hearts towards you, make me love you as I used to love you, make me desire you. The, the fathers will open the Bible because they are so interested to read. They do a, a worship because they are happy. They love to stay in solitude. One of the fathers who was 73 years old, 
I was a physician, slow down, he, I told him. He said, I am so excited to serve because the night before I can't sleep because I want to help them and I'm so excited to go back again. He is passionate about the love of God. Are you passionate to come to Eucharist? Are you passionate when you are about to sit alone? Are you passionate when you free yourself and spend time with God? Zacchaeus had passion to see Christ and he was a businessman and he was very rich. It wasn't a great job, but he was having a lot of money. But he ran like a child and came up on a sycamore tree. And our Lord appreciated his passion so much and he looked up to heaven. And there were hundreds, maybe thousands around him. Zacchaeus was different. He was passionate. He desired seeing God. And as soon as Christ entered his house, everything got changed. All the money went to God and he gave away four folds of what he uh, uh, stripped from people. In Revelation 2, we hear God when he was blaming one of the angels of the churches, telling him, I have against you that you have left your first love. You used to be very happy with a verse or a sermon. Now it doesn't affect you. When you used to hear people who are repenting, now you don't care. The passion appears when you are passionate to pray. And the passion for a quiet time and the passion to repent and confess. I remember one time A man has been waiting for me for three hours and I used to bring people in and I didn't notice. So I asked them, why you have not been telling me to come in? They told me, he told me, because they all deserve better than me. I don't mind waiting to receive the absolution. And although he was a businessman, he did not mind waiting because he is very passionate to receive the, the absolution. Your heart is very good. And then another person will say, the priest has no time. You are not passionate to repent. There is also passion for the Bible, studying the Bible. When I was in the military service many years ago, I had a, a colleague. What are you going to read for us from the Bible? Let's have half hour alone. We were using to do a Bible study for 30 days for those who are in the military service. And he is the one who has passion for a Bible and he wants to listen. Another person, he says, I don't have time, I want to sleep. The passion for discipleship that he wants to be a disciple all his life and he wants to learn from his fathers. He will do an effort to spend time under the feet of somebody else and that affect him all his life because he wants to take something for himself and he takes. And there are another person who has many good people around him and he doesn't learn from anyone. Like the person who is like a disciple of Elisha and he was thinking of money and garments and silver. But the Syrian, the no man, the Syrian, 
he was coming asking for the discipleship of Elisha. Although Elisha was not really well dressed, but this commander in the army was interested to learn. Passion to hide. Pope Cyril and Pope Shenouda and Pope Tawadrus, they were crying when they were scared to lose, to be hidden. They were scared to be losing their solitude. The passion to stay in his cell because he is going to have Christ alone. What about us? Do we have that passion? Passion to go to heaven. He is eager to go to heaven. He is desiring heaven. A lot of people are scared of death. But for this person, he is so passionate, not because he he hates life, but because he is passionate. Passion to go to the depth. Someone told me, I look like the people who by the shore listening to Christ, but I wish I can be Peter who is in the boat hosting Christ. When I'm going to move from the level of just standing by the shore to go into the depth to be with Christ alone, with no other person, Him and I alone. The passion to acquire a virtue, when you keep praying, asking for humility, asking for wisdom, asking for purity, as a praying and asking for calmness and quietness, praying and asking for repentance. This is a passion to acquire virtues, not a passion just to be ambitious and to gain more um, certificates and gain more money. This will come to you, but what are you ambitious for? Command us to enjoy your benevolence. This is the last part of this prayer. Command us to enjoy your benevolence. Benevolence means in the Bible is heaven, or it could mean also let us taste the kingdom of heaven now because the kingdom of heaven is inside you. Peter asked Jesus, command me to come to you on the water. Without thinking, Peter asked for him to command him to walk with him, and he started walking. It's an amazing moment. Maybe he walked several steps and then he got scared and he was picked up. But command me to walk with you. St. Paul in his first Timothy chapter 6, he said, Command those who are rich in this present age not to be hofty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. There is an enjoyment, there is a lot of richness. Whatever happens, happens after that. I want to enjoy this, Lord. Help me to enjoy it. One time I asked somebody who prepared his life and gave his life to, to be a missionary in Africa. Now he hardly sleeps and he hardly eats and 
He has no much money, but I am much better and I feel so happy. I feel that God is with me in every minute, not just every day. My life is becoming with Him. Command us to enjoy your consolations, your comfort, your grace. Lord, you console the broken-hearted. Give me consolations, give me joy and comfort. Command me that I enjoy your big heart, so I have a big heart like you. Command that we enjoy your simple eye. Help me to have an eye like you that I don't see any bad in people. Command that I enjoy your compassionate hand. Help me to enjoy your hand that's comforting me, calming me. Command, order. Command that I enjoy your wisdom because your wisdom is beyond my comprehension. So let us really enjoy this prayer. Restore us to your fear. Restore us to your passion. Command that we enjoy your benevolence. Restore us to your fear. Restore us to your passion. Command us to go back to your benevolence. Restore us to your fear. Restore us to your passion. Command that we enjoy your benevolence.
محبة الله لا ابن عمة ابن الوحيد ربنا وإلهنا مخلصنا يسع المسيح شركة هبة عطية الروح القدس تكون مع جميعكم أمر بسلام سلام الرب يكون معكم فنشوف فرحنا في الصورة النهائية فنوع تاني نوع تاني ثلاث دقائق بس والأباء لو يتعبوا يجوا جنبنا يلا يا جماعة نوع تاني والأباء اتفضلوا قدام من فضلكم كرهسي هنا كرهسي هنا معلش وبتوع سان بول هنبتدي على طول بعد قدام سان بول هنقعد مع بعض بعد كده